Hey guys, welcome back to Scooby Doo Night of 100 Frights for PlayStation 2. I am Sajuk and we're going to be continuing on with this game. Now, previous part, we got the helmet invention and uh, came back through that gate to get back to here. Now, for the record, this has been recorded more than a month after I did that those two parts. And uh, I had to play around my OBS settings. Now, another change that I've made is I've increased the resolution of how I play the game. Uh, before I was playing it at two times native, so it was at 720p, I increased it to three times native, which makes 1080p. I just want to see how it behaves uh, in terms of lag and uh, how OBS handles it. I also had to deal with OBS resetting my settings for no reason, uh, which didn't help. So the quality should look a bit better, but I'm not too sure. I also had to deal with some cropping issues, so you might notice. I'm not sure if I can get rid of it uh, in Handbrake, but there is a black bar just along the top, um, but I don't know if you can see that. Now obviously because it's been recorded more than a month after I did the previous uh, recording, there are no silly fireworks happening. So the first thing we have to do now is we now have to head into Mystic Manor because that's where we can now progress through. Uh, I'm not too sure if my new settings will work on Harry Potter and Chamber Secrets, I will check that later. But that's not a priority for now. Um, so now that we've got the helmet and the springs invention, we can now explore pretty much the entirety of uh, Mystic Manor down this side uh, here up the balconies and all that. So what I'm going to do is the parts are going to be basically in segments. So in this segment we're going to go right up to the first boss battle right up here. Now it depends on how long that takes but if it takes an hour then so be it. Because uh, that's the way I want to go with this kind of content. I just want to put everything into nice manageable sections. Um, yes there's a monster talking above us. Yeah, so like when I um, um, I'm not recording, I take my my microphone out, I disconnect it completely, and that meant that all my settings got reset for no apparent reason. Now, despite being away for more than a month from the game, I can still remember how to play it, which is great. Here's the monster talk. I just thought I'd get that just because why not? But we can progress down this way. Hopefully the audios are okay because I did have to play around resetting them. Now one thing I want to try and do, there is some snacks here. But I got that with just jumping. There we go. Now there are some extra things just behind here. If you see these little books sticking out, helmet them. To get behind uh, the secret areas that's usually behind it. Now we should be able to get more than enough snacks in this section to get through any snack gates we might come across, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, so I've got a free bit of time at the moment uh, in between all my work. Um, I mean it's a weekend of doing this on obviously. Uh, oops. Yes, it is the creeper Scooby, don't worry. Uh, for the creeper and some other big monsters you do have to stun them and then attack them. Now if you didn't have the helmet you would not be able to get past this point because uh, you do need the helmet to break down the, the, the webs. So you wouldn't be able to get any further past this. If you did continue before you had the helmet there would be a thing telling you that you couldn't get past here without the helmet. But we're going to go over this way. The reason being is if we go this way we'll get extra snacks and get attacked by the Headless Spectre too. Now there is also a snack box we can find here. It is a bit hard to reach this one because you do technically need the soap bubble, but I'm going to cheat just a little bit and try and get it with a bit of um, platforming abuse. I don't think I can get this because I can't get it to the highest point of the, the jump. No, I'm not going to waste time too much for that. So let's progress. Uh, so my, my vocals might peak randomly, uh, just simply because I've got this all set up a bit differently and because of Windows updates as well. They've happened in the space of the time uh, since I last uh, recorded anything. Which does mean that all my sites did get reset as I said. Anyway, let's focus on the game. So it's just a case of navigating through Mystic Manor, which can be quite difficult because there is a lot of enemies around here. That's a difficult one to reach because you do have to sort of fall in and then jump. Um, what's over here? Ah, here we go. Right. 
So we've got more than 600 snacks without much effort at all, really. Right! It's the Headless Tender! No! Okay. Just wait for this bat to get past. Jump across the gap. And then progress on into the fourth area. Now this bit does have a section that you come back to later, but it's not until like the far end. Uh, there's a cellar area uh, that you can get to from here, but you can't get to it until pretty much the end of the game, so there's no point worrying about it. Now, unfortunately, when there's water on the ground, you do uh, have difficulty controlling Scooby. You won't be able to use your helmet, which is frustrating. Um, now, what we're going to do is, before we do anything else, we are going to get rid of the headless spectre here, just to... That was difficult. Because I just lost it at the last minute. But now here is where the secret area is. Uh, well, it's not a secret area. It's the door that's locked from the other side. If you just have a look over here, it does say this door is locked from the other side. It is basically the cellar section, which is the last level of the game before you go up to the secret labs, which we'll talk about later. For those who play the game, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry. Um, all will be revealed far later on in this Let's Play. And what we want to do is hit this button, but we're time limited to get back to where the key is, which is not very helpful. And of course, because it's all uh, wet, we will not be able to use the helmet, which is frustrating, but there we go. And then once that stops, the flames will come back. So you are time limited for that, which is frustrating. Again, that key will unlock our way onward. Which is helpfully the last section of this, um, of Claver in the Manor at least. And uh, now go down here, now it seems a bit silly to go down here but this is actually where the warp gate is, I don't know why they put it well out of the way like this but activate it. And then we can at least get back to here if we ever needed to, I don't think we will find any, any excuse to do so. Helmet this way. Geronimo, Geronimo, can't say the words at all properly, and here's a snack gate, we've got more than enough snacks. 200, it's fine. Let's head to this next section, which is Mind Your Manners. They all have rhymes, these names, but we're not going to worry about that. If you deal with this, uh, you get jolly music. But I think it only plays us because I don't think that particular... Oh, for fuck's sake. Sorry, I just swore there. I... I said to myself I wouldn't swear, but this section does get on my nerves because of the ghosts getting in the way. Right. And the camera angle doesn't really help either. Now that um, vent that was on the floor, um, once you get the umbrella much later on, and uh, that vent basically acts as a shortcut to the very top of this area. Uh, so we're here at Mind Your Manners, that shortcut will take you up to Cowra the Tower, basically straight up from where we are. I don't think it's designed that way. Yeah, I just did a lot of that wrong, which is unfortunate. I can't get to that now, but never mind. If I did that properly, I would have got up there, but oh, I'm so tired. I'll do this early morning, uh, uh, effectively, so I'm trying to get ahead of the game with the, t the limited free time I do have. I could reach it. Never mind. Here is a lamp that we can a little bit of abuse there to get to things. I don't think we could do this, but it's fine. Yeah, so when you you come back and you're backtracking, you will come along here with the soap bubble, soap bubble the bats, and then you'll get up to the top. But never mind. Into the next section. This section might pass quite quickly because it isn't that much to do. Creepers! It's the creeper! It is. And there's Shaggy getting scared by a ghost. Which is our route onward. So we've got to get up there. Now first of all, what you want to do is not notice that some of the text changes randomly. Oh come on. There we go. Can be a bit difficult on slidey floors. Now, you may notice here that the text is a bit different than what it was earlier. That does happen in this game, the text does change randomly. And get these four keys to unlock the way on. Ah, no. 
I'm going to just take a pause here just a second. Can I not go that way? Damn. Yeah, so this is a lot of one-way stuff that you can't go back unless you jump off the edge uh, to get to it, which is very frustrating in my opinion. Right. Snack box. Right. Yeah, hang on a second, I'm just going to take a pause here. And we're back, folks. So I just needed to take a pause to try and waken myself up a little bit. I didn't realise how tired I was. I've got some sustenance to keep me going for the next half an hour. So, anyway, so we're just progressing through this level, which is frustrating in the amount of enemies that there are. And I just completely missed that dude entirely because of camera reasons. And uh, we're just going to hit this uh, person. Here. Now, this witch is usually hard to hit because they are floating, uh, but you can sometimes get a hold of them. But it's okay. This door is frustrating because it only opens at certain times. And once you go through it, it doesn't open again. Even I know it does open again, okay, so I just ignore what I said. Now going through that door does reset everything behind it, which is silly. Now here we can get to a monster token. No, there's no one there. If we just swing backwards and forwards. You don't do that. <laughs> that's that's the one thing you don't do. Which means I have to run all the way back up to get it. Like, so now it is easy to get back up here. But the switches do respawn, just ignore them. And get through the door before it closes. That was close. You do have to sort of double jump, which is frustrating. I'll just um, get these snacks. Because why not? Can I reach that one over there? I wonder if I can. Whoa. Oh yes I can. Rubbish That's actually pretty good. Oops. I know it could progress. I didn't realise you could jump that far, but it does take... You probably did notice it did take me out of bounds of the game. Somewhat. And, uh, come on, let me through. There we go. The camera changes are quite frustrating at times, I could tell you. Or especially when you get fixed camera angles like this that you can't see really very much, but never mind. Let's enter and go to the next section of Mind Your Manners. Well, if you notice, we just turn back. Oh no, the text is still weird. Definitely wasn't that small before. Now, it could just be because I'm now playing on 1080p, which has got a bit bigger, but I'm not too bothered. Watch the ghosts. There's a ton of snacks to be found in this section, so a good idea if you pick as many as you can up. Now I think if we just try and jump, oh sorry, if you just jump back you will get another, um, go. I'll just try to get as many snacks as I can because it means I don't have to worry about the real difficult ones that come up later. I can just focus on the easy ones because it just gives me a buffer. I'll not just camera kind of angle there. Now this has a um, a noxious camera angle. The, the the viewpoint is quite weird. Hang on, just slow down. And I missed one. Never mind. If I just run along here. Get that. And then get here. Oh come on, I missed another one. Now it does go back right, so we are just going to let it go right, just so I can get rid of these hard ones. I don't have to think about them. That was a pointless camera change, but never mind. Now, given that the way this is set up, you must be able to jump from section to section. Quite why you would want to do that, I don't know, because this level's too diff this section is too difficult to do that. Let me just go back. There we go. And there's especially a ghost there, which doesn't help. And that button opens up the secret way. You may have noticed earlier. So basically all we did is we just did a loop right oh, round to the starting area again. Because apparently that's what we have to do. Now this is the end of Mind Your Manor, so we're going to go into the next little section. Which is no work gate. We'll just progress. Yeah, so now there, notice how that the font's changed again. It's now back to that mono space font rather than the weird 
calligraphic font. Uh, it's not a, a resolution thing, that is just literally how inconsistent the game is with fonts. It's just how it is. <laughs> I'm actually going to take a save here. To memory card slot one. I'm just going to overwrite this uh, save from a year ago. Um, because I think that's fine. <laughs> now, at this section here, we have uh, reached a point where we can. Um, what's the word? Hang on, this is too loud, you can barely hear us. Uh, we are at a section of the game where we are able to fail. <laughs> Fine, I fell down. I wasn't doing it properly. Uh, we are at a section of the game where we can um, go back to the beginning. It's like a halfway point. So that every so often you will come across areas which will have ways to get back to the start or somewhere before uh, in the, the level. I'll just show you. I this thing goes past. There we go. If we just come over to the left here, um, one there's a zombie. And Don Knotts is randomly here. If we just talk to him, uh, you're going around in circles, this door takes you back, blah blah blah. So we just all unlock this door. This unlocks the door by doing this. Uh, it takes us back to the very first level of Mystic Man, so we just go back in. Uh, so you have to do that just to unlock a door. Um, but then you have free passage through it, which is the main thing. Um, so when you do see doors like that, do just go through them to make sure you get back to the start. Uh, you have a way to get back to the start. Um, it just helps. Uh, we're going to just progress onward though through this section as best as we can. Yeah, so now we're going to get into the sections where there's some new enemies to find. Uh, so the enemies do change every so often, um, usually just to create a bit of variety. So you go through some enemies and then there'll be a different enemy later on. So like here we've got another, it's a tiki monster thingy, I can't remember what it's called because the game doesn't name it for some reason. Yeah, so. and one thing I will say, so some enemies are pretty much generic to all levels regardless. And uh, usually, like, um, it doesn't matter what part of that level you're in, you will get that generic monster. Uh, so, like, spiders and ghosts and things, they're usually always there. So, in this section, we do have an area that we cannot get to right now because we do need uh, to get the plunger invention, which we don't get until halfway through the game. Uh, if you try to go up, the stairs you will slide back down because it will change to uh, a slippery slope and that means that we will need to... Um, it just means that basically what we have to do is come back once we've got the plunger which we're not going to do because there's no need to do that. Now there is a, um, a monster token that we can't get to right now. Yes, I think you have to jump up there, but I don't think you can do it from up there. Yeah, I'm sort of trying to work out how you do this. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I don't think you can jump across it because that's like an invisible wall. Uh, let me just try it. Yes, there's an invisible wall preventing you from going over there. So you do have to sort of jump from the sides, which is pretty frustrating. But if we just go up here. Scooby! Cool! A roster token! Indeed. Now we will go back down there to get those snacks. Now I always thought that to get out of here you had to deal, deal with this monster. But no, it's just a case of touch this and it'll open. Um, I'm just going to deal with this creeper now. It's the creeper! Whoa! Now that thing that I just picked up there is the bubble gum, and that gives you basically two packs of bubble gum, but it's kind of useless because we don't have a use for it right now. You can um, helmet through these things uh, to get back through, I think, and they do stay open, which is helpful. Now don't do anything with that crate, it will uh, cause problems. No, I have to use the thing to get that to unlock. And then fall in because of the ghosts getting in the way because you can't see them. Right. Why are we getting a cutscene about this again? Right. It's kind of frustrating to get a cutscene in because it just means you have to right. do that again just to get 
get through. And then just go through here the way we were supposed to be going, like so. Creepers! It's the creeper! This music does mean that there's probably going to be something that we will find here involving Shaggy. Hi, here's Shaggy. He is um, sounding like he's running about like crazy. Oh, if we just start here, we will see through the graphics of him running round in circles. There he is. He's getting chased by bats, I think. I'm just gonna go up here just because we can. Get that. Those snacks. Now, one thing I, I think I saw I mentioned it is that if you get more snacks now, it makes it easier because then. Hang on. I got to normal screen here myself. Um, yeah, if you get snacks late uh, early on, it means you don't have to get some of the more tricky ones that come up later. Anyway, we're gonna go through this and get a music change. Yes, I just skipped through tracks. I didn't want to. I'm with you, pal. But the door's up there. Come on, Scoob. I can toss you up. Thank you. Yes, this music is quite nice. I like it. But we're not gonna listen to it right now. Although we probably will. Now Shaggy won't be here forever. If you do come back here, a uh, uh, platform appears instead. <laughs> and just use Shaggy to get up here. No! 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 Scooby! Rahu! Where I roll? Rahu! We're now about to hit a thousand snacks if I do very much. Now you can see the exit is there on this button, but of course we can't get to it because we are standing, uh, which is not very helpful. Uh, we, we have to have something standing there to keep it from uh, thinging. There's a soap box, which I'm just going to get. Can I get it from like this? No, I can't. Rahu! There we go. No, we're not going to forget about you, don't worry. So that will take Shaggy up here, let's not fall down. Does I, uh, I can't really tell if it would be a stuff it would appear if I fell down. Probably it would, because that would be unfair. So you have to get Shaggy to stand on here and then throw yourself forward, and that keeps the door open. Looks like I'll be cooling my heels around here. See you, pal. Yep. And that allows us to continue. Now, you don't have to do that again. Um, the door will remain open. So let's just progress into the last bit of this section. Which is quite a bit of a difficult one here. So the creeper will try to deal with it, but he'll fall down. Which causes the bats to appear. Which is not very helpful. <laughs> I'm going to take this down just so it gets out of the way. I'm going to just hit that. That gets rid of the bats. And we get rid of the creeper. And then we can progress normally. And I'll just get these. We get everything down here, it just makes everything so much easier. We've got nearly, t I mean, we've got well over a thousand, we're only a, a short way through the game. The problem, of course, is trying to get all these snacks in such awkward positions. That was a fail. I'm not even going to try to get some of these because they're just a little bit out of the way, in my opinion. And that one worked. I just jumped perfectly. This sort of becomes just a jumping exercise, effectively, to get everywhere you want to. Oh, 
Rahu! I don't know, you hear is Scooby going Rahu all over again. Because of the amount of times you're doing this. It just gets a little bit Rahu! repetitive. Rahu! Shut it. Where I go? Scooby! Yes. Rahu! Shut up! For goodness sake, it gets annoying after a while. And then I got all of them with a little bit of trial and error. Now we can't do anything about these witches because they're too far up, but that went way faster than I was expecting. Um, just to, oh, these are too high up to reach. Uh, we do need the super smash for that uh, to deal with those ones. We're not going to do that. We're just going to progress through as best as we can, unlock the swarm gate and get to the next snack gate, which is 350 snacks, which is quite a lot actually. And we're into the balconies section, to the rooftops. This has some good music. It just seems so jolly, doesn't it? And I just missed a bunch. Um, now I will just say that the invention that was just shown there, the knight's armour, um, you do not need to collect that because all it does is replace the slippers and lampshade effectively. Same, literally the same thing, you do not need to get it if you don't want it. It's one of those ones where it doesn't really change anything because it's just replacing one of the earlier ones. If you're going for I don't know if it affects getting 100%. Now this music does play a couple of times later, so I'll give you a better chance to listen to it later uh, when it's not, like, raining. Uh, because it's too hard to hear over the sound effects, I don't really want to turn the sound effects off. Yeah, there are gargoyles here, just try to avoid them, you can't really do anything with them. And that was a fail. Trying to get it up there, it's too sloped, effectively, I can't, um, there, yeah, got it. Now I know there'll be plenty of people commenting saying why are you going for all these snacks. Well, as I've explained, I just want to make things easier and I shouldn't have done that. That was a dumb idea. I should have had the, the gumption to do it properly. So. Get lost. Bats. I find the thing that makes this music so good is it just seems so catchy, you know? It's just a catchy tune. Right. Just run this way. Now you can't do anything with the gargoyle really. Uh, you do need the super smash to do it properly. And um, our eyes, you, you'll just find yourself faffing around trying to get there. We're not going to go. Um, there's a like a. You might just see it there that there's a, a lampshade right here that we can grab onto, and it'll lead to some snacks. But it's so frustrating to do this because pretty much all the time you will get hit by a ghost because the ghosts get in the way unless you time it well. Yeah, this one will always be in your way, and there's no point in trying to avoid that. It's pretty much impossible. Okay, lost. Those gargoyles are frustrating, especially since the attack that they throw at you is just like so long ranging. And we're gonna head in here and hear the music a little bit better, I think, because it's just the same. Yeah. It's just sort of like a joining level, this. I don't know what it's for, but it just. Um, yeah. Now if we run down here, there is a door that we cannot unlock because we do need three keys. And uh, we can't find all three keys in this little section. We just go down the left here. There's one of them. And then we now have to deal with the Tiki Monster dude again. Now another thing is to get to these places you have to deal with the, the monster attacking you pretty much. There. Get that. 
Gets to keep. Ruby snacks. Now the last key is in this box, you will just get it. And then progress on. Now this next level comes up, it's a bit weird, it says Coward in the Tower Part 1 but there isn't a Part 2, Part 3 or Part 4 for it. And there's no Part 1 of Panic in the Attic either, it's sort of like a bit of a mishmash between two levels. And it's kind of weird in that respect. Now we're not going to do anything with this button because it does activate this event but you do sort of need the umbrella to do that. Also mind your minus where the event was to lead you up here, it comes out just here. Um, so yeah, if I just show you the map, it says Kyra in the tower and if you look at the numbers it says 8 out of 342 snacks and 2 monster tokens. But then it immediately jumps to panic in the attic, it's sort of like a joining level and it's basically like part of the same thing. Now we are in the rooftop section which is the last bit so we're not that far from the, the final, uh, the final, the first boss battle and we will get that done in this part. Which I think is a good achievement. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit of a weirdly named one, I suspect they were going to call it Cower in the Tower but then changed it to Panic in the Attic for later. Panic in the Attic makes sense but I suppose this is more of a tower so that's probably why they went with that name. <laughs> That is the doorway into Panic in the Attic, but we're just going to head up this way. Yeah, this landing is covered with tar. And that's actually where we come from when we complete the boss battle. So we're not going to worry about it too much. So as you can see here, we're not had a part in one of Panic in the Attic, but this is just part of it. Now to get one of the monster tokens, you will want to just um, wait until you get the plunger, because there's no way to go get it while you're sliding down, effectively. Now the way onward is actually to jump up there, but we're not going to do that, we're going to go down this way. Now the reason for that is just because there's a bunch of snacks. And it just means I don't have to worry about failing uh, too many times. Because once you get the plunger, it means that you don't have to worry about this level at all. Like so. So you just push forward and then jump at the right time to get up here. And I always thought this was a dead end and I'd done something wrong when I first started playing this. It's only when I was playing it through again that I did realise that there is a jump point that you have to get to to progress. It is kind of confusing that because you don't really see it. Especially if you're a young person you wouldn't really notice. And it, this section is full of keys because there's another uh, key to door up ahead. Then funnily enough you don't really know anything about because you just find the keys randomly in this section. You don't know what they're for but you just expect it to be a locked door. So while you're progressing through this bit you will just find all three keys before you get to the door. Look at that. Now if you just jump onto here you will get a nice shot of the door with the locks on it. Some doors will show the padlocks, some won't, which is silly. I don't know why they do that but it's just, it's just weird. Get that there, and then rush past her to get into this bit here. Panic in the Attic Park 4. This music's also good as well, I like it. Just sort of, it's just, I think it's just because of the fact you've got the, the passageway up um, up there with where the barrels are coming from, it just sort of makes it feel as if it's you're going up to the heavens almost. If you just look at it from here, it just looks so far and distant as if you're going up many levels. But let's stop reminiscing. These cavemen are frustrating as heck. Stop reminiscing, I can't really when this music's playing. If we just jump up here, I'm not going to make it too much of an effort to try and get all the snacks up here, this is too difficult in my opinion. Because the jumps are so, the platforms are so narrow 
but it does make it just a little bit difficult to uh, jump and the perspective is not great either. If we just use this it might actually help a little bit. Yeah this actually helps if you just use the slippers. I'm pretty sure this is not what you're supposed to do but we'll just take it anyway. And then you get an out of graphics camera shot because of the camera change there. Right. Let's ahead, Oops, let's I didn't know where I went because the camera went a bit weird. I'll just get... I thought it was sort of gliding out of the camera to be honest. We'll just go this way, we'll just get the, the stacks we missed. Like so, and then progress onward. Down this, way. So this is a way to get up here and uh, if you have the umbrella or something I think you can jump the gap that's down here and um, if you do a pretty long jump or something I don't I don't know how you jump it I think it is the umbrella that you use it just gives you a bit more distance so you can just shortcut that little platforming section the barrels and here's this uh, rock gate and a stack gate is now worth 400. They do get pretty pricey. The last snack gate is something like 800 or something and um, so we won't see too much of them now and um, most of this level is pretty much the majority of them. I think there's one or two that come up later but primarily it's just locked doors in non-passable sections. It's not so many snack gates now. Okay, we're going to have to deal with the creepers first before we do anything. Especially as there's a cloud shooting lightning bolts which gets in the way. So we'll just ignore that. So this is the last section before the boss battle actually. The boss battle is in this bit now. The best way to tell if you're about to go into a boss battle, um, funnily enough, is by where the warp gate is. Now normally the warp gate can be found on the last section of a level. So like there, then you go on to the next one. If there's a boss battle, then the warp gate's always on the level before it. So like here for example, there's no warp gate there, which means you can tell it's probably a, a boss battle. Because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Now we're just going to hit that button. Now we do have to get up there quite quickly because otherwise we will uh, get stuck. Because the gate does come back up, but we do just have enough time to get up there. Now there are some snacks in this section that to get to you will need plunger for because this is all slippery on a slope effectively. So there are a couple of snacks. If you're wondering, uh, wondering why you haven't got full amount, come back here with the plunger. Walk up there and you can just see them over there. Uh, you can't get to them because you do not have plunger, you'll never get back up. Yeah, wait for these to, to go first before you um, do anything otherwise you will struggle. But you may notice that there is an opening just around about here. Right. And this opening pretty much acts your way up. And once you've got up here there will be a platform that appears to get up here. Let's walk up here. Now, normally you're supposed to use the plunger to get up to this bit, but you can uh, just jump up to get to it. In this case, it's not a case that you will not be able to get back out because it's just a normal slope. I suspect the devs expected that to happen. Uh, push this button and it'll open up the, the blocked doorway. Helpfully. That uh, cover angle was atrocious. This monster being here is annoying. Some of these monsters can be in quite tricky locations and the levels do get harder in the sense that you get less time to react to some annoying monsters that throw you into bottomless pits. Anyway, just head through this door to reach where the warp gate is. Yes, this will be about 45 minutes this part, I think. As Shaggy gets scared by Geronimo. Yeah, it is Geronimo. Get rid of him. 
single talk to Shaggy about this set. Now, one thing that's inconsistent in this game is that sometimes the, the characters don't have voice lines uh, for speech patterns that you talk to them about. So in this case, I will have to read it out. Zoinks, I know something scary is behind that door up there. Be careful. Save your progress if you get a chance. Now, one thing that is kind of silly is that right by um, 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 monster areas, there are uh, save points. In fact, there's looks at a save point as soon as you get to um, a monster point. So the water gate is first, which is there, and then there will be a, um, a save point. Now, we may have a, a, a graphical glitch come up in a minute. And when I press this button. Yes, as you can see, the uh, the things don't disappear properly on some of them. And uh, don't worry about that. I think that happens in the, P the console version as well. It could just be an emulator thing, I don't know. But it doesn't do any harm, uh, it's just that the graphics don't properly despawn. It's fine. But it doesn't do any harm, we're getting hurt. I think you need the plunger to get to the things that are on the end of these um, sloped roofs. Um, It's like a snack box or something that would just annoy. And also, uh, she's still there for no reason. Now the four keys to unlock the gate are right here. And Jackie will provide us the lift to do so. There we go. And there's the fourth key. I do need to get um, a bit of health, there we go, there's the water gate, it does mean that the next section does have the boss battle which is where we're going to conclude the level once we um... I'm going to try and jump a little bit more to try and get to some of these um... I don't know, I can't get to any more, what a shame. Now there is a save point right here which is suspicious in of itself, we are going to take this save point uh, right here. And there will be a cutscene, so I'll just let you listen to it. It's quite an interesting one, this. We meet the enemy for the first time. <laughs> Boom. Ah, the infamous Gooby-Doo. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the mastermind. Boom. I'm the reason you're here. Are? I'm the one who made Professor Graham disappear. Rodan? I'm also the one who's brought back all of your old foes. But why? That is a mystery you will never solve. And one more thing, I'm the one who's kidnapped all your friends. <laughs> well, Ma! Scooby-Doo! See if you can get past this fiendish fright. You remember the Black Knight. <laughs> um, Relma, he was a beard. We'll worry about that later, Scooby. Watch out, it's the Black Knight. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty interesting depiction of the Black Knight, but there we go. Now, this is a very easy battle. It looks harder than it is. All you have to do is, when he's about to walk past one of these points, just hit the button. And this is his way up there, that makes this easier. And he just. Yes, like that. And all you have to do is repeat this. Now, after the first one, he will start throwing these things at you, um, and they will increase in numeracy as you um, as you um, continue, so you do want to just be careful. Now there is copyrighted music of sorts playing, so you do have to be careful. Hopefully this doesn't cause any issues with YouTube. It probably will, and the Black Knight wins. Not really. Because I will shock him. And there we go. Done. That's all you have to do. Now we're just going to get up here quickly and get this music to stop, because it does get silly. And there we go, cutscene. My glasses! Help me look for them, Scooby. Okay. Something fishy's going on here, Scooby. We solved the mystery of the Black Knight ages ago. Have you found any clues? 
Or I don't know, there was a spooky groundskeeper. A spooky groundskeeper? Yeah, and ghosts and, and monsters. Scooby-Doo, you know there's no such thing as monsters and ghosts. Remember the first time we met the Black Knight? We thought he was a monster, but really he was just a guy in a mask. Aha! I found him! Jinkies! The lenses got knocked out! Here's some lenses, Velma. Thanks, Scooby. I can't see a thing without these. Jinkies! Scooby! It's the Creeper! The Creeper? Where? He's... he's everywhere! Run, Scooby! Velma! Wait! I don't see any Creeper. That was a clue in of itself. Um, for those who are attentive. Hello. I'm Professor Alexander Graham. And you found one of my amazing invention crates. Let's see now. What's in this one? Oh, here we go. Well, inside this box, you should either find my automated herring scraper or my anti-stick galoshes. Oh, looks like it's the galoshes. With these, you can walk across any sticky surface and not get stuck. And best of all, <laughs> they're banana flavored. Oh, banana. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> these might be useful. They will be. They will allow us to progress through a lot of areas, so we're just going to get out of this section before any more music plays, because I'm not interested in hearing this music. So just go over here, and this will lead us back to current entire part one. Where there's also a monster right. token, which I'm just going to pick up just now, just so I can find a good place to pause. So basically we learned that the mastermind is the guy who is causing all the trouble, and Velma's seen creepers that didn't exist. Now that is a clue of itself that will be revealed quite late on, uh, not until you have to rescue Fred. Now, basically the um, the four others, so apart from Shaggy because he just shows up randomly, the other three will show up at all the other boss battles in each of the three sections, so they're your main goal. And at the end of the, the sections you will get another uh, invention that will allow you to get to the next uh, area. So with the galoshes, we can now go to anywhere that involves uh, sticky tar. And for those who were attentive, you may remember that there might have, you might have seen this camera shot of sticky tar in the first part, down here at Shock on the Dock. And we will uh, be able to progress through the fishing village up to, I think, here. Or here. So somewhere around here, we will be able to um, get the next invention. And then that will lead us to another. So there's a lot of bit of backwards and forwards, which is a bit frustrating, but it's not a problem. So that's part three of Scooby Doo Night of 100 Frights. I hope you enjoyed it. We got up to the Black Knight, we defeated him, and we learned quite a few things along the way. Notably, that Velma now has lenses in her glasses that have the Creeper in them, which we will learn later. But for me, Stu, that's going to be that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to head down to, um, I believe, the fishing village and explore that area. Now that we've got the galoshes. Bye now.